Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. So we're going to slightly tweak the formula a little bit because there just isn't much Nintendo news. We could do the whole Miyamoto sneeze this morning. Let's, yeah. let's talk about we it. Did. Or we could, <laughs> yeah, Gesundheit. Or we could just accept that there's no news and just have a bit of a chat about things instead. Exactly that. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. So more topics and giveaways. We're going to be giving away or telling you how you could win this lovely copy of the signature edition of Sparklight mm -hmm. on the Switch. Uh, thanks to Merge and Sparklight for that copy. Two signature edition games and Merge, yes, absolutely. What did I just say? Sparklight. It's the name of the game. That's what I meant. <laughs> Let's get on with the video. Okay. So the first uh, topic that we want to talk about, and one that I know Glenn is going to be all over, okay. is are digital games overpriced? I think um, the problem is that when there's a physical release of a game, mm -hmm. the digital price has to match it. I don't know if that's officially has to, but yeah. generally, as a general rule of thumb, it does try to match the physical yeah. price. Um, I don't know if they're overpriced. I think that's a very personal question, but I have a limit that I won't spend on a digital game, yeah. no matter how much I want the game. Yeah, and that's around about twenty-five pounds. Well, by twenty-five pounds, it's pushing its luck. Yeah, and that's not because I don't think necessarily it's worth it. It's mm -hmm. because I don't like buying digital games. I uh, before when Glenn would have said that, I would have said no, like it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Buy it digitally. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to insert a cartridge because I am a lazy man. <laughs> uh, you just play the game. But unfortunately, I've had a, I've been stung a couple of times already with the Switch. When you've got as many games as as, as we get, luckily to review, mm -hmm. some weird things have happened. So I had what was it, Bold Boy? Yeah. I I bought Bold Boy, and then recently it just showed up as I didn't own it, yeah, didn't it? Yeah. And I definitely bought it because I played through like the game, and then and it. So with digital purchases, I don't feel you've got the same security. No. I had that once on the Wii U. Yeah. Um, with a pinball table on. Uh, what would it have been called? Was it Zen Pinball, I think? Mm. And I bought the Walking Dead table and it just disappeared and said I didn't own it, which was odd. So yeah, that, I'd never really thought of that, but that's true. That it's, is a, yeah, an it's, issue. it's not great. I wonder if anyone could let us know in the comments. Is that something that you can contact Nintendo for and say, yeah. look, would they even... How would you prove it? How would it? you prove yeah, it? Because it's, it's disappeared from all like <laughs> record. I don't... Um, yeah, I don't know what the answer is to the question because at the end of the day, if you want digital games, you'll pay the price. Yeah. But I don't... There's a limit in my mind, and then I think at the end of the day, that's gone past impulse buy. Mm -hmm. That now feels like mm -hmm. for that much money, I should own what I'm buying. And by own, I mean hold it in my hand. Physical copy. Yeah. And that's... Which brings me on to my next point. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the whole buying your physical copy and getting a code in a box? It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's the most ridiculous practice <laughs> I've ever heard. The other day, I was going to buy a game. Yeah. Silly little game. Not the sort of thing that I would have bought were it not for the fact it was about six quid yeah. on, a, on a, a store. And it was a puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle uh -huh. game. So there it is on the box, six quid, yeah, I do. Went to buy it, put it in the basket, and then at the last minute notice it say download code in box. Is it, in, is it quite clear, or do they make it quite difficult to see? It says it on the very top of the, the box art. Right. You know, you know, like the ones that require an additional download? Yeah. It has that little bit at the top. Yeah. And it's normally in orange, and it says download code in box. But because it's the last thing I would consider looking for, yeah. I would assume that I'm buying a physical. It's, you can be caught out by it. It's a, bit, it's a bit naughty. It's really naughty. The thing is, it doesn't cost, other than server maintenance, the distribution of a digital game is almost free. You know, obviously, you've got your production costs, and that's all factored in. Mm. But the comparative price for Nintendo to ship a physical versus a digital, it's, it's, it's worlds different. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, f I feel, one, the, the prices of the digital should reflect that. Mm -hmm. And two, there's no way you should cross over. Yeah. Next topic. Mm -hmm. Next topic. And another one that someone said in the comments yesterday, which I think is really interesting. They were talking about the kinds of things we would like to see in the Switch OS. It was just a new filter option and it made so much sense. And I just said, there's no way Nintendo are going to implement that mm. because it makes sense. Yeah. What do you think? What? I, I want to see the return of a proper activity log. Yeah. So on the 3DS, um, you, had, you could go into your activity log and it had your... It was really cool, actually. It was a it was a very Nintendo esque uh, way of presenting it because you had like a store, like a picture book, and you opened it up and it had the thumbnail of each game you'd played mm -hmm. when you first played it, 
And then oh, it also nice. had a, a list of the games that you played, you know, most played, with the exact amount of hours you put into it, and it sorted it by most played. And you could go down your whole itinerary of games and and see how long you'd played each one for. And I'm, I mean, you say this phrase yeah. a lot. You say, you know, I, I'm a nerd. That's my. Yeah, that's what I'm a nerd for. Stats. Things like that. Yeah, just having a look <laughs> on there. I think I spent more time on the activity log than a lot of the yeah. games because it just interests me. But I'd like to see that return. I don't know. I know they've done this recently. The uh, sort by yeah. most played and whatnot, and you have basic, the, the though, twenty. It? It's very basic, and it's a step backwards. So I'd yeah. like to see that return. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't believe. Well, I can't believe they've had all of this stuff. And got these, rid are of the, yeah, these are the kinds of things that I would say. And the weird thing is that they're not even difficult to implement. No, like modders are doing it yeah. and have done it already yeah. in weeks. And that's the little. There is those little touches that Nintendo have over Sony and Microsoft. Yeah. Those little personal touches, and if they start losing those, yeah, they they can't compete on other fronts. Yeah, and it was those little quirky touches that I used to always appreciate about Nintendo. You know, it's funny you should say that. Actually, I used to really like like the Mi Plaza. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I know it was pointless. Yeah, but again, it's just a quirky little Nintendoism, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That you're like, I'm gonna take my me and walk around this little yeah. virtual. I don't know. I just enjoyed it. Yeah, and they're just stripping it back. They to... are. I don't know if they're doing it because. Um, because the Mi Plaza and it, on the Wii you had things like the, the Weather Channel and uh, <laughs> maybe they were concerned that they were starting to be seen as too casual and right. maybe they felt the need to take some of that out and I think maybe they could have found a, a happy medium between mm -hmm. being Nintendo still and being quirky yeah. and appearing too casual and I think there was somewhere in the middle they could have stopped and they seem to have just stripped it all out you know yeah definitely Okay, next topic then is one that I wanted to um, have a chat about is the fact that the Switch is region free. Yeah. Um, some of the most recent Nintendo consoles haven't been. I think the mm -hmm. DS was the last one that was. I think I'm right on that. Yeah. Um, but my question is, is it as good as it should be? I mean, you should say the words region free and the whole world should open up to you. Yeah. But the fact that you've got separate eShops, mm -hmm. which you need separate accounts for, is region free as good as it should be? It's not. Because you've got things as well, like certain regions will have their own guides for games. I believe Shakedown, was it Shakedown Hawaii isn't available in Australia? Uh, no, uh, Hotline, Hotline Miami, Miami wasn't yeah. available in yeah. Australia, which is ludicrous. They do have very stringent rules. I mean, I used to live there. Yeah. But little things like that can be really strange. So you can n not legally be allowed to buy it, but then are you allowed to bring it in? Is that then you breaking the law? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, It's just a, a bit odd. I mean, I do like the fact that it's region free, I'm not gonna lie, and I can understand why they make it trickier to buy from other regions. I mean, why are you gonna buy, you know, if you can just go on and use your card to mm -hmm. buy from another region straight away, yeah. all from one account, you're never gonna use your own region. Yeah, it's true. And yeah. then they're gonna lose a ton of money. So from a business sense, it makes sense. And from a gamer sense, for the you know for the people that really wanna make the effort to get cheaper prices, mm. they've allowed it. Yes. So I'd say it's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. I 100% agree it's a good thing. I, I love the fact mm -hmm. it's region free. I just, it's interesting when you delve into it. Things like yeah. um, also, and I mean, this is not something I would even worry about, but it's a, it's a point worth making. If you if you constantly buy from other regions, yeah. which then technically affects the sales figures for your region, does that mean in the future that game might not come to your region? Because they don't see the point in releasing it because no one in your region buys it. When actually they are buying it, but they're buying it from another region. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I would say that the Nintendo Switch, when it connects to the internet, there's an IP tracking. So I would say they can look and see exactly where, where a game's been purchased from. Fair enough. Yeah. I would. There must be. I don't know. Surely. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how it would work. Because they know it was tied to that Switch, which is in that region. That region. Yeah, that's fair. That's a fair point. Although you do have to set up a. a a different Fake address. Account. Yeah, I, I don't know. A totally I, legitimate just, second address. Yeah, it's just worth pondering, isn't it? I don't know how mm. that works, whether that would affect things like that. And then you've got the fact, um, physical games. Yeah. Again, you know, this is what I love most about it, is the fact that if a game gets released in just one region, you can obviously import it. Yeah. Um, which is fantastic. But I do, I do wonder if that makes it easier for developers to not try to bring it to other mm. regions. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the Nicolas, um, just as a one I've pulled out the sky, they their um, releases are American. Yeah. I think they go across to Japan. Very rarely do they come to Europe. Binding mm. of Isaac is the only one I can think of that has. 
Would that have been the case if it wasn't region three, or would it have just would it have made no impact at all? They would have done what they're going to do regardless. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's odd, isn't it? Some companies they do odd things, like Capcom. Doesn't mm. matter what's going on in the world, they're, they're going to do one. their own thing, aren't they? Yeah. And they're one, like you say, that you would expect to have seen things come across Monster Hunter. Yeah. Like we were like, come on, let's mm. get that over like straight away. It took ages. They're probably a better example actually than the Carlos, to be mm. fair, because yeah. In the past, Capcom, you wouldn't have even questioned, no. will, will they get a physical release? Of course <laughs> it was Capcom, you know? Yeah. Whereas now, it's US and Japan. Yeah. Europe don't get a sniff. It's, it's very odd. Is that because it's region free and they think well, if they want it hard enough, they can import it? Or is that not come into the equation at all? I, don't, I don't, honestly don't know. I want to put a red herring kind of side because I can't answer that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My main gripe with the region free, and people will probably argue that this is ludicrous, but if, they're gonna, if Nintendo are going to do that, I think you should have the languages of the different regions, at least the core ones, you know, your Spanish, your English, your Japanese, do you know what I mean? Because I like the Japanese eShop and they have a few little quirky games on there. Mm -hmm. And I know the, the kanji symbol, is it kanji? Yes. Yeah, the kanji symbol for, for English. So I can go on there and check to see if it's got that on there, but it would be nice if they had some standardization across everything. Yeah. That's funny you mentioned the Japanese eShop because that's my last point about it, is that in the past, the EU or US eShops, mm for various uh, Nintendo consoles and the Japanese one was so wildly different yeah. that for years I was like, I wish it was region free because mm -hmm. I'd love to jump on there and get some of their <laughs> games. It's come to the Switch and they're practically the same. Mm. In fact, a lot of the indies come to Europe and yeah. the US way, way before they come to Japan. So it's actually a bit disappointing to finally get this <laughs> Japanese eShop and and when stuff does come on for them, it's stuff we've had ages ago. So, yeah, exactly right. Yeah. But there are a few like visual novels. They do a lot more visual novels there than we do. There are some, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's hit and miss whether they're in English. There yeah. are, some are, some aren't. Um, but it's just not the... Before you'd get like obscure Super Nintendo games mm -hmm. that you could buy from the, for the 3DS, I mean, for example. Yeah. None of that this time. And it's just a shame that this time it's region free. It's not there. Yeah. 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 All right, lovely. So, as usual, then we're going to have a look at some of the stuff we've played this week. Yeah. Um, do you want to start us off? I will indeed. Okay. So, I've played quite a lot of The Tourist, um, and I was surprised by how good that game was. Mm. I mean, a lot of people said in the comments, and we kind of pick up on, we look at the trailers and we're like, we try and judge the interest in a title. Mm -hmm. And that one, everyone was just banging on about Shinen, and like, Shinen are amazing, their, their approach to game design is incredible. Yeah. And then I went and watched and read an interview with the developers. And it was just so refreshing. They were like, all right, we've got a Switch title. Our first goal is going to be 60 frames per second. Yeah. And it's going to look as good, if not better, than every other Switch game of yeah. that type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, what a nice start. And then they were like, and then we're going to throw away everything we've done before. And we're going to focus on creating something completely unique. Mm. I was like, my goodness, if there was ever a Nintendo approach, yeah, that, that was should it. and yeah. was it, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And it's funny you said that because um, a lot of people said over the years that Shinen are a company that Nintendo should look to um, definitely acquire or at least work more closely with. Definitely. Yeah. They, it really is. And it's such a relaxing and interesting game. It's a difficult one to review because it's one of those ones that w won't click with everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, it won't. Some people will go, oh, this is boring or there isn't that much to do or. It just won't click with everyone. So I tried to convey as best as I could. You still get the occasional comment, this is rubbish, yeah, looks well, like Minecraft. You will get that, yeah. And you're like, it's not. But yeah, that's what I've been playing a good chunk of that this week, as well as a uh, slight sprinkling of uh, Geralt <laughs> of Rivia. You must have nearly finished that one, haven't you? Have you ever? I've never played it. Right, so basically, it. You, as everyone will attest, yeah. there's, unlimited, there's almost, not unlimited, but you can hear a conversation. Mm -hmm. Like there was this little, I was walk, I was going along on meals, as you do. <laughs> and this kid was like, I've lost my doll. And I thought, I wonder if I speak to him, yeah. I can find a doll for him oh, and I could. Okay. That's very cool. What about yourself? Uh, I've been playing two games mainly this week. Yeah. Um, the first one actually is probably a game that everyone else in the world has already played. Yeah. Which is Super Mario Odyssey. Decent. The reason I started playing, because I bought it ages ago. Mm -hmm. um, and I played about an hour of it on your Switch, like yeah. your, your copy of it, I mean, way back when. And then we needed footage for the sales video. So I played the first 10 minutes, like got the first moon mm -hmm. for that footage. Oh, nice. And then it, obviously the cart's in the Switch, so next time I've sat down to want to play something, I just ca carried on. And uh, yeah, very much enjoying it, I'm not sure as, as everyone else has. Yeah. One thing I will say about it, I don't know if I'm alone in this, please do let me know, is that um, I miss the structure of Mario 64 mm. in terms of you had the hub world, 
you had your paintings that you jumped into, yeah. and then you had what five or six stars as it was mm -hmm. to collect in that in that uh, le that world. Sorry. Yeah. Whereas in this one, it's similar in some respects, and a lot of people said if you love Mario sixty four, you'll mm -hmm. love this, and I can see where they're coming from. But there are so many moons this time. Yeah. So many more moons that you just find them randomly, and I I don't like that as no. much because I was saying to Mark earlier, we had a quick chat about it. You. You're walking towards a boss. You fight these like, bunnies, these mm -hmm. rabbits, yes. early on, yeah. and you're walking towards, to, you know, the boss battle, and you'll find four moons on your way, and then you'll fight the boss, and you get you get three moons. You get like a moon trio. Mm -hmm. But I just I don't. There's something about the fact that you you find them whilst you get into the boss that yeah. dilutes the earning of some for the boss battle. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. There's a, there's a lot of parallels with the current the way games are these days. When yeah. you were a kid, you had your Krusty's Funhouse, and that was it. Yeah. And you appreciated it so much more. Yeah. And and on the old 60 Mario 64, as you say, you had those five stars, mm. and each one was a specific challenge. Yeah. Okay, so the first question is from Riggs HB, and he says, do you legitimately complete all the games you guys review? Um, I would say not always on Switch. So for example, The Witcher, mm -hmm. I had completed it a couple of times on PC. I play enough that I feel that I've got a good grasp of the port and things like that, which again, will still be 10 to 20 plus hours mm. on the Switch. Mm. And then from there, you create your review. Now, very often we will show footage from the beginning of a game because we don't want to spoil it. And you'd be yeah. amazed by how many negative comments you get if you show the mid to late game bosses and yeah. things like that, don't yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I make a conscious effort not to show, I'll show one boss, mm -hmm. and it's, or one or two bosses, generally the first one, Yeah, just to give a flavor, because people like to see what's coming, mm -hmm. but as, so as not to spoil too yeah. much. And if you, I mean, I reviewed uh, Bubble Bubble mm -hmm. recently, didn't I? Yeah. Now, I actually did finish that game, and the reason being was because I, I was playing it and thinking, there's got to be more to this game. Yeah, yeah. And I was hoping that when you completed it, it would unlock something else. And as it happens, it unlocks a hard mode. Mm -hmm. So I played it because I just felt there's got to be more. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Did it, would it have needed to finish the game had that not been the case? Mm -hmm. No. I mean, you would have no. got the flavour for it very quickly. But would I have known about that if I hadn't done? No. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's that fine balancing act, isn't it? Exactly. And it depends on the type of game as well. So with The Tourist, for example, is a good example, I'd put in a good chunk of time and I thought I could write this review, but sometimes, especially with certain companies, they like to kind of switch things up halfway through the game. You look, look at The Messenger. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Definitely. Like it completely changes. Yeah, yeah. You review that from just the start and you're basically screwed. Yeah. So you, you've got to give it a, a, enough time. Mm. Uh, I'd say averaging probably 10 to 15 hours per game, which is still ludicrous amounts. Well, so it's funny because um, <laughs> I played a game, not not for review, I just bought this and wanted to play it. Yeah. Uh, a visual novel called World End Syndrome. Yeah. Right. And yeah, I remember, yeah. Do you remember? I texted you about it. So I'd played about six hours of it every so often, a little bit at night. And then the prologue finished mm -hmm. and the game started and it was completely <laughs> different to what had come before it. Now, I, I mean, obviously we would have played more than six hours anyway, yeah. but you can imagine some reviewers getting caught out on that. Definitely. Playing five hours and think, oh, I've seen enough. Yeah, and, and we, you know, missing yeah. the whole point of the game. Okay, next question. And this is from uh, Speedy Gonzalez, again, uh, a regular of the channel. Yeah, Thank you, guy. Speedy. Asks, sorry, how many physical and digital games do you both own? Physical games, I'll start with, I would, Hazard a guess at about 200, I think. I, you know, I, I might be wrong there. Um, quite a few, to be fair. Obviously, there's review games that, you know, I'll be a lot more. as well. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I'm the opposite. I don't really collect physical games. Having said that, we've got quite a few limited edition box sets we get sent, don't we? Which is lovely. Um, but yeah, so I've probably got about five, four. I've got four physical, five, because there's a little shakedown Hawaii yeah. there, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, so we've got about I've got about five, including this lovely little shakedown Hawaii box, which the awesome guys at V Blank sent us over. Mm. Um, and it is nice to have a couple, but for me, I do like the digital side, although it is getting a little bit more scary with some games disappearing. I've probably got about 650, 700, maybe 750. I don't know. I haven't done the count. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You do the count. You go down yeah. and times by six. Um, so yeah, that's us. I, I want a collection of games that I can say I'm proud of these games. Yeah. I just want a game because it's physical, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, and I can attest that he does not like to unwrap his games. <laughs> <laughs> I will play, I will, if I want to play it, yeah. I'll unbox it, you know, I'll unwrap it. If it's a game that I have got no intention of playing yet, mm -hmm. I don't see the point of unwrapping it. I'll yeah. leave it on the shelf, you know, and, and when the time comes, I'll open it, and if not, 
it won't. stays wrapped. It stays wrapped, yeah. Price remains. <laughs> What do you feel that Nintendo and Switch developers could do to keep momentum? This is from Drew Cicitelli, I think, um, as new consoles from other companies are released next year. And there's another question as well that says something along the lines of, with the Switch Pro, are Nintendo going to be a full generation behind? So maybe we can merge the two. Merge yeah. the two yeah. I think they need to make sure they've got good third-party developers on site. Yeah. They need to make sure that if ports are coming across, they're ports that are relevant, they're mm -hmm. ports that people want, and they're ports that are executed well. You know, in handheld Ding. mode as well. Yeah. It's got to, you know, you can accept the fact that you're playing The Witcher 3 in mm -hmm. handheld mode, and that's incredible. Yeah. And I agree it is. And I'm, I'm just using this as an example, yeah, I haven't yeah. played it. But, you know, it still has to be of a good standard yeah. that we're not just saying, oh, at least it's in handheld. Mm -hmm. You know, it still has to look good. So, Rich Kavanagh, another regular to the channel, still says, the channel, uh, yeah. Glenn and Mark, what was the first games console you owned? And his was the SNES. Um, so yeah, okay. what was the first games console you owned? The first one I had was the Atari 2600. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, some classic games on there. Asteroids, um, Centipede, a game called Grand Prix, mm -hmm. which I absolutely loved. Another one called Dodgem, which was a great game. Yeah, um, Had a very classic, like 40s, 30s style uh, gentleman on the front with his driving goggles on and his scarf. <laughs> that was a good game. Also, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that, the uh, 2600 was my first. My, the first one that really opened my eyes to mm. games, well, that was a home computer, not a console, I suppose you could argue, was the Commodore 64. Yep. Which I adored. I loved the Commodore. Um, we mentioned in a stream the other day, just came up in conversation, and I said some of my favourite games for that were APP, All mm -hmm. Points Bulletin. Yeah. Slice by which the arcade version is on the Switch, mm -hmm. is a, an amazing game. I love that game. Midnight Resistance must come Good to game. the Switch. I love Midnight Good Resistance, um, as well as things like Barbarian, IK Plus. Yep, all the classics. I think my brother had the Game Gear. We had the Master System, the Mega Drive, the SNES, the NES. Most of my game time spent early on, and I wouldn't necessarily call it a console because at the time it felt so like advanced was the Amiga 500. Mm -hmm. so I spent a lot of time on the Amiga 500 and with its little floppy disk drive and then you'd have the little, your loading screen. But that that was a good system. I had my Dizzy on there, which I enjoyed a lot. Mm. Midnight Resistance, there was Chaos Engine, which was an amazing game. <laughs> Chaos Engine was the bomb. Yeah, right. um, I wouldn't mind seeing that come over to the Switch, yeah, to be fair. Yeah. Um, what else did I spend a lot of time? Monkey Islands, this is where I really got into my point and clicks. Yeah, yeah. okay, this is, uh, Megoriam asking this question, who's another regular on the channel, and we mentioned something else about mm. um, her in a moment. Question was, if you could make a change to any video game storyline or character development, which game and or character would it be? Okay, I'm gonna have to read that again while okay. you answer. Okay, mine, would, I've got two actually for this one. Um, the first one would be Resident Evil, mm -hmm. possibly controversial. I would scrap everything after Resident Evil Free Nemesis, right, and start from there. So Resident <laughs> Evil Four. I know people loved the game, but when the story started talking about, is it a zombie? Is it not a zombie? Yeah. Five. I loved the game. Mm -hmm. Not really Resident Evil though. To be yeah. honest. Six. Take it or leave it. The story got a bit ludicrous. Seven. I know he's trying to bring it back round again, but I don't want it brought round again. I like the story up till Nemesis, mm -hmm. and I'd like to see them directly follow that point. I won't say the ending because yep. spoilers, but from that point on, tell me the rest of the story. Forget all the other stuff go from there okay so that would be one the other is a, a slight tweak to your question megorium it's a, a game called enslaved odyssey to the west mm -hmm. which was on the xbox 360 which i adored it was an amazing game and i'd like to see a sequel and see them continue that story nice very cool um i don't know if i've got two but I've probably got one it would be the point at which i completed final fantasy 7 and then went and played Final Fantasy VIII. Now I like Final Fantasy VIII, don't get me wrong, but I would have preferred almost if they'd have done like a split path. Like I would have loved the sequel to Seven. Okay. And at the time they, ch but this is Final Fantasy, you know, it's what they do. They they completely change the visual. They try and, but then they've obviously always got Sid in there. But I would have really liked, and for me it felt a bit of a strange decision because everyone knew the visual style. Yeah. They knew the way it worked. And they just they, it changed so drastically that people wrote off what was a very good game in Final Fantasy VIII as right. just oh this is some weird. So what is I mean without spoilers mm -hmm. I know it's just come out again but is it just a completely different story after seven? Completely different. Oh okay. So yeah, and, 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 that yeah, story. and all of them just kind of just jumped to random oh, time periods right. and then that's cool that's great. 
I just would have liked, and people will say, oh, there was Final Fantasy Advent Children, but I didn't have a PSP, so, you know, I didn't get to play that. I don't know if that was any good or... Was that meant to be more of a sequel to Seven then? I don't even really know. Okay. People have to let me know. I think it's the same characters. I see. Yeah, I don't know, I'm not sure. But I would have just liked to see what happens for those guys next. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that goes for all of the Final Fantasy games. I get to the end and I'm like, oh man, I want to know what happens. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe that's why they do it. Yeah. And yeah. then those self-encapsulated stories. Mm -hmm. But that's something that I would change, again, potentially controversially. Yeah, no, that's good, yeah. that's good. Um, just on Megorium mm -hmm. then, um, she sent yes. us, um, <laughs> uh, or she, she's created a lovely piece of work reg uh, revolving around us, um, which is fantastic. Uh, I don't know if maybe we can pop up. Yeah, it'll be on the screen. Yeah, that'd be great. You'll see um, it right now. But she actually has a channel um, where she showcases some of her work and shows the process of working through it. Oh, does uh, she? Yeah, I watched some of it last night. It's fascinating. Please do. Maybe we can link it. Yeah, for sure. Have a watch of it because she's so talented and, and um, it's just great seeing her process going through. Okay, so if you would like to win this lovely copy of Sparklight from Signature Edition Games, what you have to do is there's a link on the screen to our Twitter account. So if you go over to Twitter, and all we want you to do is to take a photo of your favorite physical copy of on any platform, doesn't really matter, to be honest. Mm. Just at us. It doesn't have to be a collector's edition, just your no. favorite physical game. We're not gonna favor a collector's edition over one that isn't, just your favorite game and why. Yeah, exactly that. I'll put all the details down in the description yeah. because you've probably forgotten already. But yeah, nice one. Make sure it goes. We're going to try and make sure it goes to someone that really likes collecting mm. games. A big thanks to our patrons who support the channel each and every month for all things Switch all the time. Keep it Switch up. See ya! We'll try and end this video. <laughs> for all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. How do we end? I don't know. No, no, all right. But, uh, big thanks for watching the channel. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's happened? It's like we've never we're ended trapped. the video Yeah, before. we're stuck. We're stuck in a loop. Hang on, look, come on, look. autopilot. Right. Here we go. A big thanks for watching the channel. And remember, <laughs> a big thanks for watching the channel. A big thanks to the patrons who support us every single month. And as always, keep your switch on. For all things switch all the time? No. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get out. We're trapped. A big thanks to the patrons who support the channel each and every month. And remember, for all things Switch, all the time. <laughs> and remember, you I forgot. <laughs>